to the recipe rundown. Hello, everybody. Hi, Alexandra. All right, we have a lot to discuss. Let's get into some pop culture to begin. I feel like there hasn't been too many crazy hot topics. Reality TV has really been dominating, which we'll get into. But let's start with some pop culture things. I've seen that we have some baby news and some divorce news, which I found really juicy. I'm so happy for Ashante and Nelly. Yes. They're engaged and she's expecting her first child. That's right. And they said that they were together, I believe, like 2003. And then they broke up after maybe several years, maybe 10 years, I don't know, on and off. And then they reunited. And then I guess in, what? let's see, 2003, I believe it was, I don't have my notes, I think it was like 2013, um, broke up. And then, I don't know, more recently, what was the year that they, was it just this year or the last few years? The last few years, they got back together. Okay, yeah. And she's pregnant now and they're getting married. The, the shocking part kind of reminds me of like Jen and Ben, you know? I'm looking at us. It's so funny. We're both like in black today and we're wearing our hair exactly the same so and what's weird is the viewers may not be watching they may be listening and I will continue with Ashante but what I'm looking at through my screen mine is overthinker yours says pink but the p was was covered so for a second I thought yours said think not pink I know we are matching this is so crazy we're this like wearing really weird. we did not plan this we look like we're like we planned to dress this way how is that run down that's your rundown and I was like why is your sign on the ground but you didn't put it up yet so yeah, she, it's just, it's not on the ground. It's on a bar stool. Okay. But anyway, what's cool is, you know, Ben and Ben and Jen, they got back together after all those years too. But what I think is really cool, if I'm not mistaken, she's like 43 years old, having her first baby. Right. And I believe he has kids, right? From other relationships. I don't know if he was married, but it's really cool that he and her are having a baby and she's in her late, not late, but early forties. Right. So that's, I think that's great. great. Yeah, yeah I, I was so happy for her. I think they're such a cute couple and it's such a great love story. And again, right. exactly. She waited to find her person. And now at 43 years old, like Kourtney Kardashian, she's pregnant. She's having a baby. I'm so excited for her. They're a very cute couple and I love their music. And I feel like it's like a big powerhouse couple. It'd be yeah. nice to get them on a reality TV show and kind of see the behind the scenes of them finding love again. Because you're right. It is like Jen and Ben, the reunion and giving it another shot. I really love that. Yeah. And can I just say like, it's so nice to see somebody that's expecting that's like more in the forties that he's not having a baby with somebody in her thirties or twenties. You know, it's, it's just, it's magical to see they're like in the same age bracket to me. I, I can really appreciate that. And, and to me, it's also very, very sweet that they've really realized after all these years of on and get off again, that they really wanted to create this, amazing family so I think she'll be a great mom and it's it's nice to see they're in the same age group so that's yeah. what I would like you know to see more of in right. Hollywood that's exactly right I'm really happy for them now obviously turning to some not so great news we have Gypsy Rose and her husband we talked about when she got out of prison she was married she was so happy they were going to be together her and Ryan well she filed for divorce okay. and I was really shocked by that because I thought they were doing a new lifetime show together. All these things were going well for them. Turns out from what I heard is that he was a food hoarder. And so he was hoarding all this food. And then when she went to clear out the fridge, she like yelled at her and got really angry. And oh. she said he reminded her of her mother who she killed and who was dead. Um, oh but the thing is, that's funny is people used to say that they really feel like he looks like her mom. People used to say all the time, it's so weird. It looks like she's dating her mom. They have very oh. similar features, like noses. Their faces look very similar. Oh my gosh. We should put something up on our blog. Like, yeah, you know, website I'll put a photo there. in if you're watching oh. on YouTube. Yeah. You oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's hysterical. Which is crazy. And then so it's really bad because I guess he was hoarding food. And then when she would confront him or Claire at the fridge, he would get really angry with her. Like the mother would get really angry with her. So she saw similarities that she didn't like, which is ironic that they also looked alike. But then he was interviewed and she is now back with her ex-fiance who she was engaged what? to. Yes, before Ryan. She's now back with him. And so what Ryan. Was their deal? What was what? their deal? What was their deal? The guy she was with before she went to jail. Like I don't know. Oh, I know. I don't think it's that guy. That guy is in prison oh. forever. This is just oh. another ex-fiance. She could have met, met him in jail, but oh. um, they're, they're back together now. And Ryan said he was completely blindsided. He was so hurt. He didn't even know that they were talking or had feelings together. 
So that was really crazy to find out. And then she has a restraining order against him right now so that like nothing can be taken out with the finances. Okay. But I'm just shocked. And she got plastic surgery. She got a nose job. She's blonde now. So she's really stepping out and doing all the things now that she has freedom. And I guess- Oh she my gosh. In. And do you know anything about her fiance? So you don't know anything about the current fiance? I mean, this is not just a boyfriend. He's just a boyfriend. So wait, did she actually get married? She was married to the guy while she was in jail. Mm -hmm. And then when she got out, how long have they spent time? Like how many They were months? living together and there was a new Lifetime show being started. And I guess maybe, who knows, maybe he wanted some fame too. And she's like, back off. This is my thing. I want to be on the Lifetime show. I don't think they filmed together yet for the show. So we might just see her life going forward or maybe it'll capture some of the divorce. But it's so I, crazy that right would, So she thinks it's because of because he's a, he's a hoarder. Like you're saying a like- A food hoarder. So does that mean he just collects the food or does he eat it too? Oh, I don't know. But maybe there's just such an excess that, you you know, you can't eat all of it or it's going to go bad. Oh, my. that's hysterical. I've never heard, like, I mean, I've heard of people that overeat or they binge um, and then purge. But when you say food order, just like a hoarder, right? What's the hoarder? Hoarder, like a do hoarder of dogs, right? Have a lot of animals. So he must not have wanted to turn over the food. Yeah. Probably brought the leftovers home, and which I do a lot, but I always throw them out after a few days. But no, this is like the whole fridge probably has so much old food or so many stocks of food because he's like, I, I, I don't know, he's hoarding it. When you, when you hoard things, it's not rational. That's really funny, Alexandra. Wow. Yeah. Well, that that really blindsided me. I did not get. I know you said you had some news. But I didn't think it would be about that. Wow. I thought that was crazy when I heard that. I heard it on another podcast, and yeah. it's alleged, but that could be the reason. And that just was not what I was expecting. But I guess yeah. it makes sense of a reason you wouldn't want to be with somebody. Yeah. We can move on now to some mother-daughter topics. So which do you want to start with? Do you want to talk about travel? I know there's so many differences traveling now than in the 80s and 90s and 70s. Let's talk about travel. You actually made a phone call to your travel agent to I get did. some tip top info about this topic because I just feel things have changed so drastically over the years. So why don't we talk about a little bit what, what it started like? What was traveling like back in the day? Well, can I just say shout out to Margaret Sanko, who's my travel agent at Wil Wilton Center Travel. She's been my travel agent for many, many years. She's booked a ton of trips. Just this, you know, the mere fact that I have a travel agent shows you I am definitely like more old school because, you know, back in the 80s and below, below that, people would have travel agencies. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have Travelocity. We didn't have what, price.com, whatever. We didn't do that. We didn't do that type of investigation because there was no such thing as that kind of technology. So what did we do? We had to go to our local travel agent. And I grew up in that time frame. And fortunately for me, I found somebody that I could continue that with when I moved to Connecticut. And it's been such a, such a blessing to have a relationship with this woman in the sense that, you know, I trust her. We can, we can talk about things, you know, it's not just a screen. We can go back and forth. Now, of course, people are doing all the technology things. But for me, when I have a question, when I need research done, I may have some ideas, but I need someone to go that step further. I may not have the time. I may not have the resources. I may not have the connections. And what my travel agent has done for me over these years as really first and foremost, foremost, excuse me, as create a wonderful safe space where we can talk back and forth without anyone getting annoyed or insulted. And what I mean by that is if she has an idea for me of a hotel room or a hotel and I completely hate it, or I can completely not believe she, she suggested that because it's too cheap or it's too expensive. I have that ability to communicate with her about that. And then she'll go back and she'll redo it or relook at it. And a lot of times, more times than not, she's spot on and knows what I'm looking for. Do I want to be on the first floor? Do I want to be on the second floor? Do I want more, you know, of a bougie hotel? Do I want something where I'm saving money because it's a hotel where I'm not going to be in the room much? And she also has deals. So there's been a lot of times when we went to Europe or the or Caribbean where she would have properties for me to be able to set that venue up for me, right? So what I mean by that is 
I would say I'm staying here to there at this particular time. And she would say, well, I've got a great, you know, connection with them. And they're saying, this is the best time to go. And you can get this rate. And she does what she can for me. She does things like if it's a special occasion, we always get like a goodies, like we get Prosecco in the room or wine and cupcakes and whatever. Um, so it's been really a great way to um, utilize her knowledge and really feel comfortable that when I get there, I'm not like, oh my God, just, did it really look better on the other end and did I get fooled? So I just wanted to put that out there. So I've always continued to do that. So growing up, that was the key. And so when I called Margaret the other day, I spoke to her about what her thought was with the travel business, because, you know, I have a lot of friends that do the travel agency. They don't believe in travel agency. They just feel it's easier to get on and, you know, look for things and they don't want that personal connection. Well, Margaret told me in the last 45 years of doing travel agency work, this has been the busiest that she's ever seen it. Wow. And that is crazy, right? 45 years. Well, you would think it would have died out because like you said, a lot of people cut out the middleman now because they can just go on themselves and book it. So I wouldn't think that travel agents would be such a lucrative business these days, but to hear that it's the most it's ever been, that's great. Maybe people are sick of the online scams and the tra the issues they get when they travel and then they show up and something's wrong or something's not booked right. Well, I'll tell you one of the things, the reason that, you know, the good point is, is that COVID had a lot to do and catapulted people back to having that personal touch. What she said to me is people were so suppressed with traveling. They couldn't travel that much, but yet they made connections. I don't understand this part, but she, they didn't really make connections with the travel agency. They made connections online. They were so desperate to go, right? So they would just book things online. And that's what they always did. But it was a big disappointment. Instead of being excited about you know, where they ended up, there were a lot of things that were misnomers where they didn't get to really have the experience they wanted. And so with COVID being everybody was kind of isolated, people have gone back. So what was interesting is that people were really being disappointed by, I guess, artificial intelligence or whatever, you know, however people do it, right? People Not want a personal touch. It's annoying. That's customer service said. with AI is so annoying. I'm screaming into the phone, customer service, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> it's annoying. I do not like AI. I, right. You're right. We need right. a personal touch. And that's what she said. She said, so since COVID has happened and gone, thank God, the, the, the close down of everything, people have really come in and wanted to be face to face with her, you know, even more so than just on the phone. They want to know what they're getting and really benefit from what they're getting because they don't want to just go away because they've been isolated for so long. They want to go away and be happy about their adventures. So that was, I thought, a really important piece of what she described, described to me, having gone through COVID. And I, you know, her mother started the travel agency. So to say 45 years, that's amazing. That's incredible. So her mom started it back in the day and then she took yeah. over. Yeah. I, and I also wonder just with the excess of everything, I wonder if booking now, I don't know, it's just so different. I think back in the day, it was much simpler to even go to an airport and just go through security. Obviously with 9-11, a lot of things have changed. So there's just so much extra pressure and and stress of traveling so right. I think it's nice to have someone else take care of that so then you can just enjoy your vacation and not great point that. great point because she said quote people are investing in their vacations now they're really investing and when you're going to an airport and you already know you know back in the day we didn't have to take our shoes off we didn't have free check as much maybe we did I don't know but we definitely didn't have clear clear is a good thing that's that's a positive thing yeah and free check is a positive thing I don't remember if we had pre-check then but the bottom line is back then you could walk through security with your loved one and wait till they took off. Can't do that anymore. And there's a lot of stress that's involved in flight cancellations and just a lot of extra precautions since 9-11. So to have that piece taken care of you, to have that travel agent plan, what's going to be on the other side when you get there is such a wonderful feeling to have that, that part completed, right? So I would say that, you know, travel has changed tremendously for the good and for the bad. The the bad is obviously all these annoying flight cancellations, extra precautions, but at the same time, it's good because you feel like you're being, you know, safe. You're people are taking care of you. Which what I find funny is when you do have to go through a line, 
uh, I don't have pre-check, which I have to get. It's that's a whole nother story um, where I have to get, I have to go in person to Stanford, Connecticut and do all that. But what I find so funny is I'm on one of my last trips. I didn't do pre-check because I don't have, I have clear and clear. You still have to take your shoes off, but for some reason they didn't make me take my sneakers off or shoes. And so I thought that was funny. Like what makes them okay with, all right, you're good. We don't want to be bothered. Are they running late? Is it too crowded? What is the reason we don't have to take our shoes off when normally when you don't have, you know, the pre-check, you have to take your shoes off. And then the other piece to it is a lot of times you get chosen randomly for them to do like a search on you. Um, and most times I don't, there's been a few times in my life I do, but when you have to walk through the screening and you have to put your arms up and like, like you're doing a body check, you feel like you're like in prison. That's so to me invasive. And the last few times I didn't have to do that. They were just like, come here, come, come through. I'm like, what? I could just walk through. I don't have to put my arms up. I don't have to have a body scan. Again, I don't know why that's protocol. And sometimes you don't have to do it. And sometimes you do. I didn't have pre-check, whatever, but it's such a, you appreciate that part of the travel when you're like, oh, this is easy. I didn't get the arms up. Didn't have to, you know, take my shoes off. And so that makes it so much less stressful. And then the third thing I wanted to say back in the day, um, and I did this with Olivia on this last trip to Sedona, we, I think I spoke about it. We got to go right up to the counter and drop our bags. And in, nowadays you go in, you have to go on the computer. Even if you have your boarding pass, go on the computer, fill out the stuff, take the tags, you know, put the tags around the suitcase. I'm always worried. I'm not putting it in. Right. I like to just go up to the counter and be like, here's my bag, weigh it. Thank you. And they did that on the last trip and I was so happy. Right. Delta had a whole line of that. So to me, those things just make it so much more enjoyable to travel. Right. Yeah. A few things. First, I feel like I've grown up having to put my arms up. So that doesn't phase me at all. <laughs> I think because I don't know anything different. I just grew up having to go through security. That was the way it was getting checked and scanned and all that. And I don't mind at all. So I think maybe because you had a time where you never had to do that. It's different now having to do that. But I feel because I grew up like that, it doesn't phase me. But yeah. what would you do when you had, I'm actually genuinely curious. I never really thought about this before. When you had to go to the airport, would you just print your boarding pass back in like the eighties and the nineties, and then just bring that to the airport and you didn't, cause there was no computer to check in. So would you just have to bring a physical boarding pass from home? Because now I have my boarding pass on my phone. No, I don't remember. I think I may have gotten it from the travel agent because we didn't have printers. Sure. So right? you got the travel agent, but then you went to your, your, you know, drop off the bag. What would you do when you drop off? Oh, yeah. So yeah, you had to go up to the gate. Like you had to go up to your thing, which I like that. There were no computer. You just go up, stand in line, and they do everything for you. Oh, that okay. was to me. This is more stressful. It's like the pumping gas person that I'm not. You yeah. know. And I, what happens if your flight gets delayed when you're at the airport? So say it gets delayed before you even get there. There's no email. There's no cell phone. So you just that's right. And it's like oh shoot, maybe it's delayed. Maybe it's not. You would just hope that your flight is on time when you get to the airport. That's, you know, Alzar, you made, you made a really good point. This just made you think of this. We did not rehearse this. All these weird things that we always come back to with technology. How crazy. Mm -hmm. When you think, oh, we're going to talk about travel today. You weren't thinking, oh, I got to talk about what it was like without the internet. But you're right. Okay. You get there. Imagine we get there and then we find out it's completely canceled or it's delayed three yeah. hours. Yeah. And all, this, all the event to get there. I mean, no cell phones, no extra checking. You know, you're, it's... It was very simplistic, but it was all like last minute stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're right. It was very, very stressful because you never knew about those surprises. You always had to hope for the best, but anticipate the worst. You just want to know. You right. would not know. That's so awesome. Go ahead. I'm not hearing anything about, do they have computers? I'm trying to remember. They didn't have computers. Of course. There were definitely computers, some sort of, some form of computers in the 90s. Uh, to check all the... To check everything. I don't know if they just had a written thing. But that might be a little bit extreme. They had to have had something to, make, to communicate with the planes and the other airports. It's just so wild. I do feel even thinking about traveling with maps in a car. I cannot believe that you used to have to map something out. And, and before you go, say I wanted to go to my friend's house. Okay, I have to turn right here, turn left there. And I didn't do it because I have a learning disability and spatial well, religion. I couldn't read a map. I'd have to, I'd have to do a test run and write it That's out. What I was thinking, I told my friend, I was like, I would probably just try to go the day before if I had a doctor's appointment or something, I'd probably just try to test drive it the day before to just like, you know, check it out. And then I couldn't read a map. I, I don't know. I think I would write down the directions. Maybe I'd ask, 
how to get there. And then I'd write the direction. And then I never. How slow are you driving to be, okay, turn left on Radskin. Okay. Is this Radskin? Turn left. Like that is crazy to me that people crazy? got, I don't think, I think we are so dependent and reliant on our GPS. I oh. GPS everything. I could not. And then even the night before I want to map out, okay, if I have to be at the dentist at 2 PM, what time should I leave by? And my GPS maps it out for me based on traffic. So I, I would just have to wing it. If I wanted to be at my friend's house by two, I would just maybe give, I don't even know how you guys did it back in the day, but you had to do it. So it it's just crazy. something that came naturally to you. But now how reliant we are on maps, it's crazy to think that you had to do that. Yeah, and you made such a good point. Even like, if I'm like plugging it in and I have a GPS and I'm like, why don't I hear the voice? Why don't I hear the voice talking? Oh, well, at least I can see it up on the maps uh, in my car. But my God, even I have gone from old school to new school and I'm still disappointed. I'm like, why can't I hear that voice? And I should be like, thank God there's something to hear. Thank Do you God remember when it was in the car and our car was our GPS? I remember our <laughs> first car. I think it was the GPS was not, you didn't have your phone back in the day. You had a oh, GPS yes. in your car. So you would right. map it in the car and then it would speak out loud, like your car speakers or whatever. That yes. is what you were driving and having dad but it put in that in our student. And I think it was like pretty shoddy, the GPS. It wasn't even that great. And oh, it would always mess up. I remember that in our, whichever car that was. was. It a, I don't, is, was it like a GPS like machine? Like was it I a- I think it was like either a small machine you put on or it was in the car, but there were, I think phones were illegal to use. I mean, obviously texting right. all of that is illegal to right. do while driving, but right. I remember cars either had a specialized GPS or you had to buy an extra one, but now we can just use our phone. So I'm sure that just went away old school. And now yeah. you have a kind of a Bluetooth thing. Yeah. In cars, but it's crazy how travel, how people did it back in the day. I don't even know how they did it. Yeah. And, you know, also, I'm also trying to remember like the luggage was different. You know, I went to that hotel I stayed at. It's great. The hotel at JetBlue. Uh, what is it called, Alexandra? The, the hotel where it's the old school plane. It used to be, um, oh my goodness, the name yeah, of the- And they converted it from an airport to a hotel. I don't remember what it's called, but it's very- the, um, I Now it's escaping my mind, but it's a hotel that's at the airport at JetBlue and it is replicated. It used to be Pan Am. Remember they used to have Pan Am. And so they rep replicated this. And it's just to see the old luggage, to see, you know, what it looked like, the old baggage claim. They don't, you know, it's obviously not- Flight attendants first outfits. And then they converted one of the planes into a bar, which was really awesome. Right. You can go in and it's a giant airplane. Even seeing there was no seatbelts, the seats were different. It was so much wider. They oh, there weren't seatbelts? I don't know. I think back in the day, they it wasn't anything- safety wasn't as strong maybe there were seat belts but it was very loosely done and then there were definitely oh. bigger seats was it the twa hotel maybe so it was a twa yeah i think that's what it's called it was amazing it's such a great hotel to see great and the luggage was all well it's funny the luggage then was a lot of hard side now it's come back full circle i never do hard side because i can never fit anything in i have to do the soft suitcases because i like to cheat and put everything in you know, the sides and everything like that. But I feel like, yeah, it's just so much more detailed and it's complicated, but it's not complicated. Depending on what you're looking at from when I was growing up versus now travel, oh my God. And I just want to mention also like the flight attendants too. I mean, in in my day growing up, I think the flight attendants were all really nice and all just so sweet. And it was more like just like watching a television show. Now it's like so routine for these flight attendants. And sometimes you get lucky and you get a great one. And sometimes you just get some of the flight attendants that just don't really care. They're not mean. They're just, they're just so burned out from all the travel, you know, with everything. Um, I think back in the day, it was a little bit nuanced. It was cooler. You wanted to be a flight attendant and right. it was your big chance to explore the world and see the cities and it was something special about being one of the first flight attendant girls. They were very respected. They were kind of like pinup girls. People had little cards with the flight attendant's faces on them and guys would hand them out and they would want to keep them as a keepsake. So it was something definitely more special and reserved. But yeah, I just think it's so fun to talk about the differences. When we really broke it down, there's so many differences in travel. And also the, the flight cost. I've gone up significantly since there's such a demand. Margaret said to me, you notice that all the flights, all your seats are full. There's no empty seats anymore. And she's right. So because of that, there's a high demand. All the prices are crazy. So it's hard. I mean, I can't get you here. 
because, you know, as often as I'd like, because it's just very expensive. And same with me coming to you. So it's, it's, it's a challenge, but we love traveling. We're not going to stop traveling. And I'm glad, I'm glad we got to have this conversation about travel. I feel there are so many different levels and layers to it, thinking back to then and now, and I'm glad I kind of have a new perspective. I really appreciate GPS and I, I want to have a travel agent one day. I think it's just such a cute niche job and I hope it never goes out of style. Reality TV, I have so much to say. Vanderpump, so you think you can dance? Let's get into that now. Yeah, I thought that the Vanderpump last week was really good. I thought it was really fun to watch. There were a lot of dynamics to it. I found that it was interesting to me about Tom Toms and how Tom Toms they're serving the brunch and you know how that's going to take off. I'm not well because sure. Pump closed down. Pump was at least okay. a restaurant for years and years and years. It closed down, and now they brought their famous Pump brunch to Tom Tom, and it's going to be another way to bring in revenue. Maybe give some of the Pump servers a chance to get back in there since it's closed now and okay. elevate a new level to Tom Tom. And Lisa definitely has a hand in that, has a hand in pump. So she'll definitely have a hand in this brunch. I thought it was cute. I obviously saw, we saw Sheena put out her new song about yes. Raquel and Tom. And I actually did feel a little bit bad for Tom in that moment when he was like everyone is profiting off my misery. He thinks him and Sheena are bonding and getting closer. And then she puts out this song that's tearing him down again and rehashing yeah. the whole scandal that he wants to get away from right right I I think that I personally don't know if Sheena and any of them will really ever feel exactly the same with him but maybe the like the more that Rachel's out of the picture and Ariana's moving on with her life they can make it work I just don't see Ariana ever ever having a cordial interaction with Tom Sandoval at right. all well, should also, she stay on the show, though? Don't you feel like maybe she should yeah. leave for her own sake? Because who wants yeah. to film with their ex all the time? How is it ever going to evolve? I agree. I agree. I think that um, with with her, once this, I believe the acting is wrapped up in New York City, right? She's pretty much done. I'm wondering, is that boyfriend going to then move to California? Or is she going to keep him at bay in New York and just do a long distance thing? I feel like the more her life gets fuller and busier, she'll be further away from Tom Sandoval. But what I don't know is if they'll ever, ever really have a cordial interaction where he can be part of the group when she's around. Because I feel like when he's around, she just flips out and she can't deal. And it almost makes it look like she's still in love with him, with the anger that she's you know, showing. So I don't know how that's going to take off. I do know that they're all venturing out differently we talked about this last time, kind of feel like Lala should be on the other show. because, like, wow. that. Well, what did you think of her sperm donor party when they were- I thought that was interesting. I thought it was kind of quick and interesting that they, it was all based on the description. They had nothing That's else- what it is. That's all yeah. you get. But it was like, not very much. It wasn't like you get to see the person, you just- read about you never get to see the person because then you would know you only get to see baby photos of the of the person but you don't get to see them as an adult because then you would know what they look like and, and you don't know like really too much more about their life right you don't know where they I'm live sure they didn't know you would never get that information but i'm sure they they read genetics all of that stuff they didn't want to read on the phone but you get medical history you get all of that and then we we didn't see that play out but we kind of saw the looks and the attributes and what what they're like and I thought it was kind of specific because just so you know, this show is a big show. What if the guy has a wife now and his wife watches the show and she's like, oh my God, that's what you put down for your sperm donor. The, the song he likes is very specific. It had ocean in it. And then something else about his career. I mean, if he ever watches this, he'll know he's a sperm donor and that could open oh, up a other can of worms. Oh, he won't find out that he's the father. I thought, no. I thought. I thought you know who the person is. Like, no. I thought you said anonymous. you'll get to know her and she'll get to know. Okay, so you never, that originally I thought that. Originally I thought that you don't know. But then I thought you, I misunderstood. I thought you said they get to know each other. No. Like you get to know who you pick. No. You just know attributes about yeah. the person. But and if then the guy hears what's being said on TV, he'll know it's him. Right. Oh, because he has no idea that he fathered. But I, again, oh. this, we don't know how old the sperm is, but I'm sure maybe it's probably new based on how she was speaking about it. But if he was like 60 now, whatever, but I'm sure she probably picked sperm of someone who's around her age. Again, if he or his wife heard about this, they'll know that, oh my God, those were your answers to those questions. Right. 
And the person that's a sperm, sperm donor, do they make a lot of money? I think that's why most people do it. Yeah. They make a lot of money. And then the person that's paying like Lala, she says it's very costly. Lala doesn't pay him. He gets, he just gives his sperm right. to the cryo bank and they she, get, no, she pays the cryo bank, doesn't she? Yeah. And I'm sure she got a huge discount for showing it on the show. It was just so short though. Like I thought the party was going to be a little bit more in depth. Like they weren't going to just be like, all right, here's the description. And then everyone picks. So I feel like they're really cutting Lala's scenes. I just feel like from the past when she wasn't, you know, pregnant or maybe like on this, she's not even pregnant yet, but I just feel like leading up to being a mom and then right after being a mom, she had a lot more scenes. And I feel now she's more like, floating in and out, not really a, a, a strong presence there, more yeah. of a wisdom and peacemaker, but sort of going in and out very quickly. Right. I feel the same way. I feel that they're really cutting the things that are important that I actually want to see, like the sperm donor party, they cut it short. And it's a bummer because they're giving a lot more airtime to Ariana and Tom and Tom. But I also think Lala's storyline is, like you said, really evolving to almost the valley. And I want to see things like that. I want to see her real life, which is not just being the mediator for Tom and Ariana and being in the midst of the scandal. It's her having a sperm donor, her rebranding, her yeah. life after Randall and everything that happened with her own scandal. Like, I want to see those things. I agree. I agree. And I actually wonder, you know, you see a lot of Lala on air, like Instagram, doing Amazon Lives, right? You see her in a new home in Palm Springs. You see her with her brother, Easton. You see her with her mother, her dog. These are all things I know through just taking a quick glimpse on Instagram and seeing her pop up. She seems more prevalent on those, those domains versus the actual te television show. Right. So why aren't they bringing in her interaction with her mom with her brother, with her dogs, with her friends. Yeah, that's such a good point. Like Palm yeah. Springs, we should see Sheena and Lala's life in Palm Springs, their neighbors. Now they both just bought houses in right. Sherman Oaks, in the Valley, which maybe we'll see next season. But that's why I think they should be on the Valley because I want to see more of their friendship. I want to see their real lives, not just them kind of being background characters to what's happening with Ariana and Katie. Exactly. And so, yeah. yeah, so I'm just, you know, she gave this Amazon thing where she, you know she she revealed she's having yeah. another girl again why don't they show that part on the show right. why is it just her being kind of being the wisdom maker it seems like, it seems like she's ready to fly away from it and kind of spread her wings to another venue right and yeah. I also find it funny because we saw Anne on the show and Anne has now disappeared Tom Sandoval's assistant that Ariana tried to poach but oh. in fact, she's working at something about her, the sandwich shop now, which I find to be really funny. I think she's behind the scenes doing some assistant work for them. Now, do you know that just from knowing it or did I miss something on the show? Just from knowing it, it's kind of like rumblings around Instagram and social media that Anne is in fact working for something about her and we'll either see it later on or it's going to be in the next season. But that I think is what's happening. I feel like Lala and Katie have not been interacting. They go in and out where they like, kind of forgive each other and then they make up and then they get back to being angry and feeling like they're not being heard, you know, from their point of view to each other. Right. And then there's sides being drawn, you know, with Ariana drawing it to Katie. Right. And I think Allie is just in the middle. She's more like the referee. So I think that's where the Lala thing drama we do see when it comes to Lala and Katie. But other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot of drama going on in, um, you know, Lala's life at all. Right. I think it's more of an issue with Katie being upset. And also this whole thing with Katie from last time, is she bisexual? Is that just a shocker? Are they doing that for ratings? I don't know. I didn't really understand that whole thing with Katie right. and her ex-husband's yeah, was Katie and her ex-husband going after the same girl. Right. I, I I think that was just for storyline. Nothing really uh -huh. came of it. I would have liked to see both of them on dates with Tori if we were right. going to get a storyline out of it, but it really showed such small clips. They made that look so big in the trailer and then nothing came out of it, which really blew my mind. I agree. And it's like, I haven't watched a whole lot of the D'Amelios, but I remember in the earlier season, and I don't know if they did this for the latest season with D'Amelios. If you notice, it's the same thing with Vanderpump they do a skyline of LA and yeah. like you'll see the beauty, you know, the beautiful trees, the beautiful, 
and you have to quickly read. It's not like you just listen because you want to know Tom's house, D'Amelio's house. Like you want to see what you're about to watch. So I notice I'm, I know it's random, but D'Amelio's too. They do like a panoramic of LA right. to bring you into the next reel. It almost feels like it's being videotaped by the same person. I don't know if you ever noticed that, but yeah, the shots look very similar and the shots yeah. also look very beautiful. They're getting yes. the best parts of LA. They must be shooting in like the summer because it's always bright and beautiful. I noticed yes. that too. Maybe it's editing. Maybe it's like CGI. Really that they knows. do that. They want to show you and then bring you back to that someone's house. You know, right. you do a panoramic of the LA and now you're back at the house. So yeah. that was really interesting to me. I think that wraps up Vanderpump though. Any last thoughts um, before we go to So You Think You Can Dance? I think that um, I'm looking forward to next week. I do keep thinking ahead, like what's going to happen once Lala has her baby. Because again, you never see... Her, her little girl on the show. You never see. She's not allowed to be on the show. Randall doesn't allow. Oh. oh, so guess what? This new baby will probably be part of the show. I didn't realize. That. So I'm really glad that I've like ventured into becoming a Vanderpump follower because especially loving LA so much. Yeah. That's the only one I like to see, it, you know, in and out of the Beverly Hills Housewives. I don't care about the other areas of, you know, the Valley, I would, but I, right now I'm just focusing on that. I may teeter back to the Valley. It's good. It really is good. And the thing I like okay. about the Valley is that you don't really need to know. I mean, Jax and Kristen were front and Vanderpump, but everyone else is new. So if you're starting at the beginning, you're getting to know everyone just like everybody else. None of these characters have history or background that the fans know about. So you're getting in on season one. So it's not like you have to learn all of this complicated backstory we know Jax and, Br and Kristen from Vanderpump. That's a whole different story. But I feel you can watch the show from a new perspective, like a, a new viewer. You don't need to know. Yeah. Much. Sounds good. Yeah. I'll, I'll look into that. All right. Moving on to So You Think You Can Dance. Did I call it Dancing with the Stars? No, I didn't. No, you said So You Think I want to say that every time I see Max. But all right, let's get into it. I know. It. I know. Well, I would have to say that originally we were going to tape and do one show. And I had, you know, decided to watch two shows because I feel like there was more to talk about. Yeah. I'm so glad I watched and bundled up into two shows versus talking one show with So You Think You Dance because I feel like today's, you know, the, the second episode that I watched from the other day was so much more intriguing and exciting. I was very, I've been very quite disappointed in up to this point, the way they do it. Because I feel like last week with the music video, it was like exciting I thought it was going to be exciting. And then when they actually presented it, I felt like the judges are very programmed and not very, how do I say it, creative in their comments or authentic or actually real. I almost feel like they're robots really? Really? having to say something negative. Mm. And I think that's on the fault of the fact that we're not seeing all the little nuances that are going on in between the raindrops because they work with the manager. They put on a video the music video, then Max, Jojo, and Allison critique it. I feel that the way they're critiquing it does not feel that authentic as when I watch Dancing with the Stars, where you really get every person on the judges panel to talk about every person performing. Right. So, so you think you can dance and one that. person talks about one person, one person talks about the other. I don't like that. But sometimes all. they interject. Sometimes Max will interject, but yeah. we, we have a new judge. We didn't speak about Jojo Siwa. She was right. the guest judge. She's the new right. surprise judge that's replacing yep. the old one. And yep. she's so funny. She came in wearing her new karma outfit to promote her new music video. I, I think oh. it's a good range of ages for the judges because Jojo's as a younger dancer can kind of see things and knows how how it is to grow up as a young dancer. And then some of these people are young, they're in their 1920s. Um, I did agree. I, I thought the hip hop dance and there was a hip hop dance and there was more of a contemporary dance. Last week. Right, last week yeah. for the music video yeah. shoot. I actually thought the hip hop was really good once they got into it for the yes. final performance. But I think it's just hard to judge because if Max doesn't agree with Jojo or Allison and then they want to vote someone into the bottom and Max thinks that person's great. Isn't it all objective? Isn't someone's routine? If it's not technical issues, but it's heart, it's kind of who, who emotes emotion to me? Who do I connect with? And it's not going to be the same for all three judges. So how do you judge based on right. that? And was, I can't remember, were they both hip hop dances? No, one was hip hop and one was ladder, like, the ladder dance. And it was more. Con how do you judge? I mean, I guess when you think you can, when um, dancing with the stars, 
they eventually have to do every dance, right? Everybody right. has to try out every dance. But I don't think they compete on um, Dance with the Stars with the same dance always, right? right? So like, for example, they might want, somebody might do the cha-cha, somebody might do more of a, right. a hip hop type thing on Dancing with the Stars, right? Is that right? But yeah. they eventually- So you think you can back. dance, we had two groups and the music videos were totally different. One was hip hop yeah. and one was- more contemporary but then this week we had two dances for broadway and they were both broadway styled so they, yeah, that they did make it easy yeah i do feel i do feel though a couple things let's before we talk about broadway i want to go back to last week i kind of feel like it's hard to judge because then from those videos they pulled out the people i feel like they should have been the exact video same dance two different choreographers yeah and I think that would have been interesting to see because part of it, you have to blame on the choreography. I mean, they're doing what they're told based on the choreography. And then after that, they pull out the individual dancers, which, you know, they pulled out the two ballet dancers. Those were the two girls that went home last right. week, Olivia and Ava. 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 Yeah. And so, or Avery, but, Avery. But Avery. I thought also they pulled out Jalen or Braylon. They pulled out Braylon and Easton and I think Easton is phenomenal like his dance in the bottom two he was safe he made such a great like emotion I think Easton is such a winner so I can't believe he was in the bottom are you talking about today nope you're talking about last week yep yeah so they put him out but then they said you have to try harder right I Easton I agree I think Braylon it was very emotional I think with him what is the name of the guy with the red with the blonde hair the blonde curly. Oh, Jalen. Jalen. Yeah. You you said they, they put him in the bottom, right? No, they didn't. They put Braylon in the bottom. Braylon. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, because Jalen is more goofy and everything. Yeah. He's, yes. But I feel like those two women that they sent home, how do you judge it? They're ballet dancers. Right. So, of course, like they're beautiful, but this is not a ballet contest. Like, I feel like it's really un uneven. It's all in what they're, bringing to the table in terms of the type of dance well and then and when they do the last thing. dance to save themselves they're obviously going to showcase yeah. their best their best moves right. and their best right. technique so if right. you're in the bottom two you're obviously going to do a ballet dance because that's where yeah. you shine so then how so do that, you judge it's so hard yeah and I also felt like it was I couldn't I couldn't get a sense of who they were criticizing when I was watching these group videos last week I felt like it was all ju like jumbled like it's very hard to like to see each person performing. It felt very, very jumbled. And it felt like you had to be a real professional. That's why it kind of felt like they were just making things up for the for the camera. Right. Like, oh, so like they always have to say a good thing and then a negative thing, a good thing, a negative thing. And then fast forward to this week where it was so amazing. It was so, like you said, it was so interesting. We love the Broadway, right, Alexandra? Right, the Broadway, Broadway was present. great. But and then, well, there was but, a romance. There was a romance between Anthony and Dakela, which yes. was this week, which I thought they gave us some love to dancers. I liked that. I thought that was adorable. But what I didn't like is, again, you know, with the Broadway dance, I felt they were completely different. One was a cabaret and cabaret dance, and one was more a dance that was um, more sexy, not sexy, but more fun more lighthearted one was goofy like, right more goofy and like guy, anthony they're like oh you didn't shine you were too goofy. too goofy but that was the role of what he was supposed to do in that right so again is that the bad choreography is that him how do you judge that that to me is weird yeah so it's like i feel like they're trying to play it to the cameras to make this more dramatic i don't find it that exciting when they do it that way i feel like they need to be more individual dancers and then like Dancing with the Stars, they always do a group dance. Yeah. And they have to, they get more points for that. Right. That, that, that would be a good thing to do. They, they do don't... this season different than last season. This is like the first okay. season where they're doing activities, like working dancers. Like if you were to be on Broadway, if you were to be in a music video, they've never okay. done this before. So okay. the challenges are so different. Maybe they're still trying to figure out how to do it, but you're right. They should have done a group dance where you can get extra points. It's just hard because they're literally throwing these dancers into two different categories and two different styles each round and so how can you judge I guess it's just who individually is shining and who individually is not shining because you can't judge them compared to each other because they're different dances and also I kind of feel like they should have Max Jojo and Allison be the ones that choreograph the dances yeah I agree and and, and then I mean there's three against the two groups maybe make three groups three on right. three 
And also we should be, we should have an incentive to be in a group because here's the thing, right. you should get group points because if you're thrown in a right, group, but if you're yeah only getting judged individually, who gives a shit what your group mates are doing? Exactly. You want to have an incentive for your group to win together. Well, exactly. Because that's the problem. Like they pulled out people from the group and then they had to prove themselves and how, you know, the, the group itself didn't really count because right. they didn't stand out in the group. Right. They judged it based on the individual people in the groups. It made no sense. It made no sense. And then the bottom, we had, again, unfortunately, oh. Brayland, Roman, uh, Aunt Dekayla, and Anthony. And I thought- I, I, I knew they were going to do that. I did not want Dekayla. When they narrowed it down to those two, four, I knew it. I honestly, honestly thought Roman should have gotten it. Me too. Me too. Roman was my favorite. I wrote Roman was so- I I love him. him. He's my favorite. Me too. Favorite. My Me famous. too. Roman. He was my favorite. I thought Max would have partiality yep. because- you know, Ukraine and ballroom yeah. dancing. I thought it should have been Roman. I could see the ballroom dancing, but yet he brought that this amazing. Fun and then, yeah. yeah, sexy. And he he, I love the music. He was Me my too. favorite. Um, Him and Tony, Anthony. Tony, Anthony was great. Yeah. I felt bad for him. You really, but I did love, I did love Braylon. Yeah. I thought Braylon was amazing. Me too. I actually thought it should have been Braylon it, and Roman. I agree. This was the second week Braylon was in the top bottom two. And I don't think he deserves it at all. I think he is such a hard worker. I think he's such a star. I loved Braylon and Roman. That was, I completely would have voted out Anthony and Dekayla. Exactly. And then when they say, it's really weird. I mean, they're going to say there's no coincidence that they're dating, but the two they saved were the boyfriend and girlfriend. Well, I knew it. The moment it got narrowed down to uh, Roman, Braylon and Dekayla, I was like, oh crap, they showed us that whole romance only because they're going to keep Dekayla. Because why show us that whole romance if they weren't going to end up keeping Dekayla? Oh, they did that. They, you think they Like did? back in editing, they probably edited it. So we, we wanted to root for the couple to make it through to the next okay. week. And I'm like, no, I don't want and that. I just, I think it's weird that you bring in these. I know they do that at, um, Dancing with the Stars. They will bring up choreographers. But they teach everyone. It's the same. I believe it's the same choreographer, isn't it? Dancing with the Stars, one choreographer doing all the dances. No, that. it's well for the group, yes. But it's their yeah. partner who choreographs it. Like your dancing partner makes. No, it I know. Group. But when they bring in a group person, yes, yeah, one choreographer. It's like the or, guest choreographer. Like, and then they also have the judges giving right their tips and doing. And the judges dance. go in. Well, that's what they could do. They could have Max stop by rehearsal or Allison stop by rehearsal, and then JoJo. They could have a different judge stop by each time to give their critiques. You're absolutely right. Why aren't they doing that? Right, and then the other thing is. Are you a group dancer or are you an individual? Right. I mean, Roman is not used to being a group dancer. Well, he probably is actually because he does. He does. Um, I take that back. He does the ballroom dancing. But like, if you're an individual dancer, why are they doing so many group things to determine right. who needs to prove themselves on the individual level? I think it should be an individual level thing, and then maybe towards the end do a group thing. I don't think the group thing should be in the beginning. Yeah. At all. Or a partner. Why not one other dancer? Right. Why is it only section off? Very the hard, very hard to judge with that. Also, I kind of think what would be cool is if they would pick a group and then have them choose the style they want to do. Yeah. So if they match the group up and then say, Do you want Broadway? Do you want hip hop? Do you want modern? Do you want tap? And they decide that together. Would, that would be really cool. Granted, they're trying to show that they're good and and they're versatile working with a group. But if they get a gig as an individual dancer, it's not going to matter matter if it's a group, unless, again, it's on Broadway or something like that. Right. But Or the I music mean, video, I guess, is what we saw. Music videos. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I find this really complex because when they did, and I stopped watching American Idol a long time ago, but didn't they always do individual singing? They mm -hmm. didn't do group singing, right. right? It was just an individual thing. Right. I think it should be an individual thing. Yeah, I don't think it should be a group thing. It, yeah. There should be more dynamic and more layering. I find it I very, agree. very um, robotic every week. And that's why this week was more exciting to me because I felt there was a little bit more detailed stuff going on versus just, I thought you were this, yeah. but you were terrible. I thought you were great, but you seem like you're not letting yourself shine. Right. So- it, to me, that was a disappointment. So how many rounds of So You Think You Can Dance are there? Like, is it a couple more weeks? Is it Yeah, a couple more weeks, because I think we narrowed it down. We're like going top seven or something like that. So we're losing two people each week. So only a few more weeks left. Okay. All right. So then, um, and then they win 100,000. And do you think there'll be any more group dances or no? I hope not. I think going forward, we should have individual or partner 
Yeah. I don't know what else they could do for the groups. Like if you're working as a soloist, right, we should see that. We should see right. what they bring. And again, uh, Jalen excels at hip hop. I'd like to see him do some more hip hop. I don't really need to see him doing, he's good in the other type of dances, but like, I want to yeah. see what he shines at. I want to see right. him come out with a cool hip hop dance. I don't need to see him yeah. doing a uh, modern every, every week. Cause they, they didn't right. put him in hip hop to begin with. And I know they want to show that you're diverse, but I also think like when they do the solos to fight for their lives in the bottom, it's so heartfelt. Their solo dances. Cause they, they dance with what they excel at. So I want to see more of what they excel at. But didn't they, one of the criticisms that, oh, they did so good, like Roman did so good, but we didn't see that in the group dance. Yeah. Well, one of them, they said, they said one of them was like, I took so many notes, but I haven't even read Like Braylon, notes. they said Braylon doesn't come through in the group dance, but then right. I feel like I want to see them doing moves that they're comfortable with, not because that, that gives them an advantage, but because why don't you choreograph a dance? Like, or even if it's not a dance that they do, I want to see them do it alone. I just want to see them choreograph the dance for them where they can do it individually and compete yeah. that way. At least yeah, for they're saying oh you're holding back again it also depends on the video it depends on what they choreographed if they choreographed like the person that choreographed you know one of the things for anthony and he's all cutesy well he's not supposed to be like this like stiff right, manly man she said he wasn't coming off like a man she said he was coming off too goofy i'm like the part was goofy was chicago fun. broadway exactly like exactly and that's what's making this show more i don't know what the way it's, it's not even it's kind of fragmented. I, I feel, feel like that Max is the only real judge. I think Allison's trying agree. too hard to give I do too. critiques to be like a shock factor. or yes. But I think Max is a true dancer. Everything he says is just the truth. Like he'll I even agree. look at them and be like, I don't agree with that at all. I agree. I just think I Max agree. is no nonsense, says it how it is, doesn't give too many critiques. I agree. I no. like that other lady. I don't like JoJo on this. I'll be honest. I like JoJo the other Siwa. lady. And she has a music video coming out, you said? It's already out. It's called Karma. She's rebranded now. She doesn't do the bows or anything. As you see, her new style is right. hard-edged, like rock and rock yeah. and roll. She calls herself, she said she's trying to get into the gay pop scene and, and really take over the gay pop. So Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But it's interesting because you remember she was partner with Max's sister-in-law. Yes, so Jenna on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. That's so funny. You know what? I would hope that she brings some of that over because now that's very interesting. Both Max and Jojo have been on Dancing with the Stars. So I will hope that she brings some of her critiques and training from that, even though she's been a dancer forever. Yeah. She should try to structure it more like that show. I agree. I it agree. works. The show's been on for so long because it works. And it's weird the way they do it. It's just, I don't know. I find it not as good as Dancing with the Stars, but I'm still watching because I want to watch We're the dance. I want to see who wins now. Yeah. But I think that wraps up, right? That wraps everything up for this week. Have a great week. And uh, we'll have more drama, hopefully not bad drama, but more drama. Next and week. More surprises and shocks. And yeah. And any other stuff that you can think of that you want to bring to the podcast next week. We'll talk about it off camera. Yeah. All right, guys. Bye. Bye, Alexandra. Bye, audience.